So presidential race still undecided. So the stock market, you know, is really reacting. The market is always reactive to the economy and also to political moves. Question is, should you react? when all this happens. Drew Campman from the Financial Partners, True Financial Partners, joins us now with some insight into all of this. Drew, happy day after Election Day. Happy day after Election Day is right. Yes, right. So you were, you were telling me that, uh, that the markets have reacted positively uh, so far today. Yeah, we've really seen a, a positive reaction to the market in regards to we're seeing the likelihood that we're going to have a divided Congress. And the markets like to see that because there's no specific policies that are probably going to be pushed through that may not be good or bad for the economy. So oftentimes the markets are, are, are going to like that more, more than dislike that. So a divided Congress is really good in, in the market standpoint. Okay. And, you know, there are people who really watch this, of course, and they, and they feel it's really important on their, their investments and such. How do you handle uh, clients like that um, who, um, who are very reactive to how the market is doing? You know, they're calling you every day saying, well, what about this? What about that? Um, right. What do you think of that? There's, you know, politics are, it causes a lot of emotion. And you throw a presidential election into the mix and you see an additive of anxiety and oftentimes people react to the emotions but you know my job and, and what i do for my clients is try to remove that emotion and not react to those emotions and, and and base it on facts and look at the 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 things that are really causing the move uh, the markets to move and make adjustments when necessary but emotions can cause mistakes and you mm -hmm. want to stay away from those emotions and those decisions when you're getting really emotional about your money yeah right um yeah emotions and money don't mix well do they no, they don't. No. It, 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 it's not your friend. Okay. No, yeah. Uh, emotions are not your friend. Uh, historically, Drew, what have um, uh, presidential elections meant for the economy and for investment in general? What, what can we usually expect in a year like this? You know, surprisingly, if you look back on history, uh, regardless of who is president, the markets have performed almost or actually virtually the same. Now, obviously, there's going to be policies or possible policies that can have a a, a negative or a positive impact on on the overall economy but you know amazingly there is virtually no difference in performance if you look past over the hundred over the past hundred years in, in regards to performance of the stock market is that right well that's i yeah. think i think encouraging right? right yeah because no matter what happens it it's going to be okay we can say that about right. a lot of things right and, um so if turbulence does return you know, to Wall Street. Uh, what questions should we ask ourselves when it comes to investing and in our, our, our savings and our, you know, our long-term goals? The most important thing to understand is there's going to be volatility. Always will be just because the market reacts and overreacts more often than not. What's the most important factor is, is to have a good foundation in your investment plan. And that means if whether you're retired or if you're still working, you know, you need to have a purpose for your money, and that purpose is there to serve you. And however that money is, is to serve you, that derives or that's going to derive the direction of how you invest your money. So as long as you have a solid foundation and understanding what your purpose is, and then that, that will create what the investment plan needs are. That will create um, the risk factors that you need to take or not take. So it's really important to build a solid foundation in your financial plan so you can create an investment plan for the long term so you can make adjustments over time. I'm a, I'm a big believer in actively managing money and, and utilizing momentum and making adjustments when necessary. But taking wild swings can sometimes be a, a big mistake. And a lot of times that's where your emotions cause you to do so. And the time frame is is so important because um, you know somebody my age I can remember uh, some some horrible drops and crashes from the 80s and then from you know it, well, I feel like every few years you know you really take a hit well when you've gone through that and then you see if you you know you you stay calm and, and stay the course you, it still turns out okay but when you're when sure. you're y a lot younger you just think well that's it I'm broke for the rest of my life I lost all right. my money right and it, right. That, that's where the panic comes in. Yes, and if, if you take for somebody that's in their, you know, mid-40s and I've got, let's say, 20 years left in the market or left before I retire, I actually like when the market goes down because I'm still a buyer. I'm still investing. And so it's a different perspective for somebody that might be five, five years or within five years of retirement or retire because at that point, your purpose of your money is maybe you need income monthly. So you have what I call live on money. Yeah. And then you have 
what I call leave on money. And that's money that you're going to invest for the rest of your life. So you have to understand the purpose of it and really take in consideration when the market does fall, if you're younger, you're still working, it's an opportunity. It's not always the end of the world. Uh, great advice, Drew. Very good. Um, True Financial Partners is where uh, uh, Drew uh, joins us from. And uh, there's a website if you need uh, any more uh, uh, personal counseling yourself. So uh, thank you, Drew. It was good talking with Thanks, you today. That was, that was very encouraging and positive. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. <laughs> yeah, thank you, you too, Drew. Thanks.